Welcome to this Arnold Culliford knitwear tutorial on weaving in ends in your ribbing. I'm working on the cuff of a sock here. It's a basic plain vanilla sock pattern. I'm using the Dave socks from Rachel Coopy's Socks Year Volume 1 book. And I have knitted this up in some beautiful fab funky fibres self-striping sock yarn in the Tiger King colourway. I've knitted uh, the cuff as long as I want it and now I'm on to the body of the sock so I've threaded my cast on tail end onto a tapestry needle and now I'm ready to weave in the ends on the back of the ribbed section. I always weave in my ends in ribbing in the same way. I find that by doing my ends the same way in different types of fabrics it makes it much easier if I do for any reason need to unpick it later and sort it out. So the first thing to do is to turn my sock inside out and here is my end and what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave it in down this column of stitches that here are appearing as knits on the side of the fabric that's facing me and I'm going to go all the way down one side and then I'm going to come back up a little bit on the other side so let me show you how I do that so that's where the yarns come out and I'm just going to tuck it under that purl bump and then through the first leg on the side of the V. I'll come in a little bit closer. So I'm now into one of the top stitches. It doesn't have to be the absolutely the top stitch, but a stitch near the top of that column of knits on the edge of the ribbing. And then I'm going to go under the same side all the way down the column and I can go through a whole series of stitches in a row and then pull it through. So there we are going through that lavender one and then there's an orange one underneath and a black stitch underneath that. And by going into these in the same way down this leg just speeds everything up. I'm into the teal section, just tucking it under all the way along. Don't actually have to go right to the bottom, but I usually do a good long stretch. And then I'm going to pull my yarn all the way through all those stitches. Oh, it's come off the needle, never mind. Okay. Give it a tug then because what you don't want is where you've woven the end in causing the fabric to scrunch up so give it a tug make sure the tension's good And then you can see we went down that outside edge and what we're going to do now is come up the next door line of stitches in exactly the same way and as we did on the weaving in ends in garter stitch I'm going to come about two-thirds of the way back up the line I find that by bringing the yarn back in the exact opposite direction it really anchors it and it makes it much less likely to work itself loose. A couple more, that should do the job nicely. Okay, and then I'm going to pull that through all of those. And here I leave a little little loop of yarn at the end then not a very big one but just a little bit and then again I give it a bit of a tug to make sure it's not in any way stretched I find if it again if it pulls tight there you might get a little blip on the right side of the fabric but that looks absolutely fine and 
And again, when I'm weaving in ends, I always leave. I always leave a little bit of yarn poking on the wrong side of the work because that stops it from flipping through to the right side. There's no way that's going to work its way through to the right side. That's going to stay very happily on the wrong side of the work and it won't be noticeable. If I turn it the right way out now, I have to look to see where it was. There's the woven in end and there it is on the right side. I do hope you found that helpful to see how I weave in ends in ribbing. If you'd like to find out more about any of our techniques-based books full of patterns to help you learn new skills, then do click the link up here to visit our website. And there's a circle down here if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure of not missing our next video tutorial. Thank you ever so much for watching. Bye-bye.